evening. Good to have you with us this evening for this special service. We're glad to have the Maranatha Baptist University, one of their traveling ensembles, with us. And we have acquaintances that we figured out that we uh, knew their parents and knew each other. That's bad. You know you're getting older when you only talk about knowing their parents and not them because they were little children at that time. But uh, it's good to have them with us tonight and good to have uh, coaches a niece with us tonight. She's one of the team members and uh, others that are here. We're so glad they're here. We're looking forward to a great time together. Let me mention a couple of uh, a prayer requests. Mary Beth Hickok is in the ER right now. Uh, Kevin is waiting uh, with her as they try to uh, find a room for her. She's in a lot of pain. Please pray for her. They're not sure what's going on. Uh, she has related issues with her back and those kinds of things and they've been doing testing to try to find out what's going on so please pray for them as they go uh, through this time and then I want you to know that we will be uh, soliciting and asking you to participate in a offering to help this group as they travel I was telling them earlier at dinner this evening 42 uh, years ago this summer uh, I traveled on a team up in Mi Michigan Indiana West Virginia Ohio uh, Pennsylvania and we were on a tour for about 85 different services and uh, I remember those days but it makes me feel really old that 42 years ago I did that and uh, we, we, we are glad that the Lord has called them to do it if they called me to do it I wouldn't go now so at my age but I I would love to go on mission trips and that kind of thing but I'm glad you guys are doing it and being a blessing to many churches as you travel and we'll look forward to the blessing you're going to be to us tonight. So this offering will be received by you taking an envelope, since we're not passing the plates, filling it out, make it out of Tabernacle Baptist Church, and just put uh, Manatha Baptist University. We'll know what it's for. If you're giving on tithely, there is uh, a special visiting group category, and that's the group here with us tonight. So you can give online that way as well if you're listening by live stream. I know they're going to be a blessing to you. Uh, we're glad that they're here. They'll be coming to lead in a opening uh, hymn with us, and then I'll come back to pray, and then we will turn the rest of the service over to them. So if you gentlemen, please get. If you go ahead and stand with me, uh, we're going to sing a couple verses of I Sing the Mighty Power of God. I sing the mighty Father, we are grateful for the great God that you are. It is amazing as we go through the scriptures and we find time and time again how you display and show your people your greatness. There's no other God like you, dear Lord. We love you for that. We're not worshiping idols or things made of stone, but the living God that works, lives, and 
breathes purpose into our life. Now, Lord, tonight, may our purpose be to hear from thee and the music that's presented. May it be a blessing to our hearts. May we respond to the fact that a place like Maranatha Baptist University is a good place for our young people to study, a good place for them to hone their skills, to go out and serve thee. I pray for these young people tonight that you'll give them great confidence, strength, good voice, and that they will do a good job tonight in all that they do for us. We thank you now for your goodness to us. We pray for Mary Beth tonight. She and Kevin are there in the hospital, ER. Would you help them, help her to get uh, remedy, to get relief from her pain? And Lord, may they find out exactly what's going on, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. You may be seated. Young people, please come. Christians join to sing Alleluia Amen Loud praise to Christ our King Alleluia Amen Let all with heart and voice rejoice Before his throne rejoice Praise is his gracious choice Alleluia Praise the Lord. And that's our heart here tonight. That's, that's why we're here. And we hope that you will be encouraged and brought along with us to praise the Lord. We don't want the attention to be drawn on ourselves as a, as a performance team. But we hope that as we sing these songs and play a couple songs, that you'll be listening, you'll be thinking about the words, and that all of our hearts will be pointed toward God, who alone deserves the glory and the honor. I hope that's your heart tonight as well as ours. We are the Maranatha Baptist University Heritage Singers. Uh, we're just starting into a 12-week tour uh, in the Midwest and the East Coast. Uh, we're right at the beginning, or this is Wednesday. We're in the middle of our second week. I'm telling you, the days start to run together already. We're in the middle of our second week of tour, and we've got uh, about 10 and a half weeks left. Um, so we're excited. We're excited about that. Um, we'd like to take a couple minutes now to introduce ourselves to just give you a little bit of an idea of who we are. My name is Peter Holloway. Um, I live in Birmingham, Michigan. I just finished my first year as a grad student at Maranatha studying biblical studies. Good evening, my name is Micah Gillespie. I'm from Georgetown, Texas, and I just graduated with a degree in piano pedagogy and church music. Hello, my name is Alicia Beachel. I am Coach's niece. Um, I just finished my junior year at, as a music education major, and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, my name is Sarah Rogers. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm going to be a junior this fall studying special education. I'm from Birmingham, Michigan. My name is Thomas Holloway, and I just finished my sophomore year studying Bible. 
I graduated with two degrees, one in digital media and the other with education and music. I'm from Watertown, Wisconsin. My name is Seth Gillespie. I'm from Whitewater, Wisconsin. I'm Emily Kinstead, and I just graduated also with a piano pedagogy degree. The next song, The Strings Will Be Playing, a string quartet, an arrangement of higher ground. One of my life verses ever since I was um, in elementary school has been 1 Corinthians 9, 24, which says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but only one receives the prize. Run that ye may obtain. And this always appealed to my competitive nature as a kid and even now to try to do my best in everything. But it's always really motivated me and convicted me to not give my second best to the Lord. No matter what I am involved in and what I am um, doing in other areas of my life, how am I striving to do my best, not comparing myself to anybody else, anyone else, but just me and the Lord, how am I striving for that higher ground? And so this song is a prayer because I cannot do it on my own. I have failed so many times when I try that. So this is a prayer that the Lord would plant my feet on higher ground. The next song I'm going to sing has the words of the, from the original text, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, which goes a, lot, a little bit along with Psalm 139, which says, verse 7, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Many times throughout my day, I remember or I forget to pray um, to the Lord for strength. And I find out very quickly that I, I cannot go throughout my day with the Lord's strength, and I fail most of the time. Um, we need to remember that God, he is our strength. He is our shield. He is our protector. And without that, we are, we are nothing. We cannot do that without him. So we need to remember that as we go throughout our daily lives. me or the 
does promise to guide us, and I'm so thankful for that. But he doesn't only show us the way that we should go. He wants a relationship with us, and he wants that we desire that relationship too. This next song is a very simple one, entitled Give Me Jesus, and it's a prayer from the bottom of your heart, and I hope you pray this prayer with us in the morning when I rise, even, even at the end of my life, when I come to die, give me Jesus. Pray this prayer with us as we sing, Give Me Jesus. Oh 
I do hope that is the prayer of your heart, and I hope it's been an encouragement to you so far, even already. Um, we are from Maranatha, and I want to take a couple minutes now to talk about Maranatha, but honestly, it flows right along with everything we've been doing so far, because there's a reason that Maranatha sends out a ministry team as a promotional team, and it's because that's the whole point of Maranatha. Our mission is to develop leaders for ministry in the local church, here and around the world, to the praise of his glory. And that's what Maranatha strives to do. That's why they send out a team like this to say, this is, this is what we want to produce. This is what we want to do. This is what we want our students to do, is to be ministering in the local churches, to be leaders in the world, examples of the Christian in the local church. And Maranatha structures their education towards that, because Maranatha believes that God doesn't just place callings on specific people's lives to be pastors and missionaries and everybody else is just kind of, you know, out there. We believe that God has placed the places callings on every single person's life. Wherever you may be, in, in, whether that's in the business world, whether that's in education, whether, whether that's in, in science or wherever it may be, God has a calling on your life. And so Maranatha has over 40 different majors and, and minors um, five different schools, School of Bible and Church Ministries, the School of Education, School of Nursing, School of Business, the School of Arts and Sciences. And all of those degrees, all of those courses are focused on developing leaders for the local church. No matter where in the world God has called you, no matter what your sphere of influence might be. And that's, that's probably the most important thing I can communicate to you about Maranatha tonight, is that we are 100% focused on the local church. One of my personal favorite things about Maranatha is the mentoring relationships that can be created on campus. Our professors, uh, are, uh, many of them have open door policies to where students can walk, walk in any time that they're in the office and ask questions, not just about classes or the test or whatever, but ask questions, get advice about life, to ask, ask questions about career, have, have personal conversations. And our professors do that because they care about the students and they care about furthering the mission in the students' lives. And I, I know personally several of my, my best friends, my, my greatest mentors, the, the people I respect the most from my time at Maranatha are the professors that I've taken classes under, that I've taken time to personally invest in my own life. Um, and, and even now, if, if I had questions or if I needed advice in my life, those are some of the people I would go to first because they took that time to invest in my life and cared about, about me and, and developing me personally to be a leader in the local church. And that's, that's, the, that's the culture that Maranatha has created. And then those are the type of people they bring in even to teach classes, the faculty and staff, that people that care about furthering the mission in the lives of the students. Another one of my favorite things about Maranatha is just the spiritual atmosphere. Because Maranatha has the mission that it does, and because they bring in professors that, um, that, that care about furthering that mission, every single degree we offer, every single course we teach is taught from a biblical foundation, from a biblical worldview, so that no matter what, what facet of life, again, that you go into, no matter, no matter whether you're in the business world or, or, or whether you're in medical or, or whether you're, you're in education or wherever you may be, you have a grounded education that not only allows you to, to be a good example by, by um, ach achieving your job with excellence, but also knowing what you believe, and not only that, but why you believe it, so that you can, again, be a light and an example of the Christian in a world that needs it so badly. And because Maranatha has structured their education that way, it draws students who want that and who want to, to, to pursue Christ and who want to grow their relationship with Christ and are excited about serving him in the way that he's called. So, and that creates an environment that allows people like me to have friends around me, to have people my own age that are excited about serving Christ, that want to, that want to do his will, that are, that are trying to grow their relationship with Christ. And when my friends all around me want to do that, that drives me to do that too, and that, that pushes me forward in, in what God has called me to do. That makes me excited about getting into ministry and serving him. And I would have to say that's, that's another one of my favorite things about Maranatha is just the fact that the spiritual atmosphere there pushes you towards Christ and not away from him. And you get that atmosphere, whether it's on campus, whether it's even online, um, where, where we have full degrees that are offered online, or you can transfer credits in from a degree you may have started at some point 
and never finished. Maranatha accepts credits from a wide range of colleges. You can transfer credits in and finish a degree online, or even if it's just personal enrichment classes um, that you'd like to take. Maranatha offers online classes for all of those things. And that same spiritual atmosphere, the same, the, the same mission, the same care of the professors, the same students that, that are excited about serving God are on campus and online. And so I would encourage you, if you're at a point in your life where you're looking at, at higher education, whether, whether you're just coming out of high school or, or whether there's a degree you want to finish or maybe going back to school for whatever reason, I would encourage you to consider definitely Christian education for those reasons and consider Maranatha. If you have any questions about Maranatha, about any degrees or courses that we offer, um, any of the financial information, we have a bunch of material on the table right back there um, that I encourage you to stop back by the table after the service and check it out. We can answer any questions you might have. There's a couple things I'd like, like to point out to you specifically. I'd encourage you to take, every single one of you, to take an Advantage magazine. This is something that Maranatha puts out every year. And we have them for free on the back table. Just a bunch of uh, articles on what God's doing through our, the lives of our alumni that have graduated from Maranatha, what God's doing at the college. It's an encouraging read, and I encourage you to take one of those. We also have CDs back there on the table. Uh, most of them have been released in just the past, or several of them have been released in the past couple years. All of them, except for one, are 1 for 12, 2 for 20, and any, any, any number of that past one, the, the price goes down to 10 each for those CDs, just um, to get some good music in your home, to, to encourage your heart toward Christ. Our newest CD that Maranatha put out just May 1st, so it's not even a month old, is Come to Me, fully orchestrated Maranatha's choir, uh, just made this CD. This is one of my personal favorite CDs right now. It's been an encouragement to me already several times. And uh, this CD, you can, you can pick that up on the back table for one for 15. If you want to buy five of them, it brings the price down to just $65. Get your Christmas shopping done early. Um, but I encourage you to, to pick up this CD. And I have that be an encouragement to you. We take cash, uh, credit card, check, all of the above. So don't let that, that be an issue for, for you. Uh, if you'd like to follow us for the rest of our summer, to, to see where we are, we'll be, as, as I said, all throughout the Midwest and the East Coast. Um, we have a Facebook page, MBU Heritage Singers. So go on there, check it out, give it a like, and you can see where we'll be um, through the rest of the summer. We'll, we post updates two to three times a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. It depends on, you know, how exciting that week was. But, but take a look at that, and you can uh, follow us. And we really cover your prayers um, as we minister for the rest of the summer. Uh, we, we, we think those are very valuable. So please pray for us, and um, we'd really appreciate that. I'm going to have the team come back now, and we are going to, to sing a song called I'm Almighty, Infinite God. A lot of times when we come to church, when we come to a service, we forget why we're there. We come just because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's what you do on a Wednesday night. You come to church. And maybe it's even out of obedience to God because he said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And that's great. That's not a bad reason to come and to gather. But we forget often that our God is worthy of our worship. He's worthy of the praise that we have to give him. Our God is everlasting. He's, he, he's infinite. He cares for us. And because of all those things, the natural response, our, our only response can be, to praise him, to give him the worship that he deserves. So join us in your hearts as we worship our almighty, infinite, worthy God. Almighty, infinite God, glory be unto your name. Hear us, we offer our praise to the one who is ever the same. Worthy is your name, O Lord, most holy. Worthy is your name in all the earth. Honor and blessing, glory and power. your light to our darkness, breaking the chains of our sin. 
quenching our thirst for your presence, creating a new heart within. For this your name, our Lord, most holy, for this your name in all the earth. Honor and blessing, glory and power. Eternity's fellowship sweet, forever we'll sing of your glory, casting our crowns at your feet. With this your name, our Lord most holy, with this your name in all the earth. Honor and blessing, glory and power. throughout my life, I've already gone through some trials and some ups and downs, as I'm sure many of you have too. Especially looking back on this past year, uh, I found that it was really easy to get discouraged and to fear and to feel completely just alone. But something that really encouraged me is that as a Christian, I know that I have Christ and that he holds me in his hand and that he doesn't let go of me no matter what. We're all going to have trials and we're all going to be tempted to fear the future and to feel like no one understands what we're going through. But as Christians, we have so many great promises in the Bible that are given to us by our Heavenly Father. And one of them is found in Hebrews 13. It's that he never leaves or forsakes his children. And as his children, we can confidently say, I am not afraid.
As Peter mentioned in the beginning, our goal is not to give a concert, but rather to point our praise and to lead in worship to the one who deserves our praise, the only one. He sent his son so that we could so he sent his son to die so that we could live in heaven with him eternally. And isn't that just amazing? Spirituals are songs that are oftentimes easy words to remember, but they are very sound theological truth. They are accompanied by a tune that's pretty catchy and sometimes gets stuck in your head. This next song that we're going to sing is no different. It's a spiritual about heaven. Most spirituals talk about heaven and the glories of things that are to come. The next song, uh, the spiritual, I lose my train of thought all the time. Please forgive me. The next song speaks of things that we have to come in heaven, different things that we have waiting for us, but the most important thing that we have waiting for us there is our Savior, and y'all ain't that good news. I got a crown up in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a crown up in that kingdom, in that good news, good news. I'm gonna lay down this way, down. Gonna shoulder up on my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, in that good news, good news. I got a robe up in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe up in that kingdom, in that good news. I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, in that good news, good news. I got a harp up in that kingdom, in that I got a harp, you got a harp. I got a harp up in that kingdom, in that good news. Lay down this world, gonna shoulder up on my shoulder, my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, ain't that good news, good news. I got some slippers in that kingdom, ain't that good news. I got some slippers in that kingdom, ain't that good news. I'm a gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up on my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, ain't that good news. Good news. Good news, good news, good news, hallelujah, good news, good news, I got a savior in that kingdom, in that good news, in that news, I got a savior in that kingdom, in that good news, good news, lay down this world, I'm gonna shoulder up on my cross, take it home to my Jesus, in that good news, my Lord, I'm gonna shout it to all of God's children. Oh, ain't a that good, good, good news. I'm sure most of us have read the story in the Bible of the prodigal son. And this is where the son demands the inheritance money of his father and goes and wastes all of it on anything he can get a hands, his hands on. But then he ends up in a pigsty because of all the money that he's wasted. But then he humbles himself, and he goes back to his father, and his father receives him with open arms and welcomes his, him back and restores him to the position that he already had as his son. And I don't know about you, but whenever I read that story, I get really frustrated with the son. Why would he leave a home that that was made for him why would he leave a father who loved him he he would get his inheritance in due time why would he demand it but then i think that's me i have a heavenly father who has prepared a place for me in heaven i have an inheritance that that's waiting for me up in heaven but yet i so willingly shove that aside and live for the world and live for myself but isn't it such a blessing that when we do stray when we wander far away he is ready and willing to welcome us back home, and he beckons us to come home. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting and watching, watching. 
searching for you and for me. Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? I would encourage you, if you have not received that call, if you have not experienced Christ's call to come home to Him, if you haven't, if you haven't laid your burden of sin on Him, if you don't have a relationship with Him tonight, and you don't know what, it, what that rest feels like to have rest in Christ from your burdens, please, after the service, talk to me, talk to Pastor, I'm sure there are any, any, any one of the, the team members, I'm sure there are many people in this room that would love to take the Bible and sit down with you and show you what it is to have that rest, to, to be able to take that weariness of sin and place it on Christ and have new life in Him. So please, don't, don't leave the building tonight without, um, without talking to one of us if you have any questions about that whatsoever. But even as Christians... We, we know what it is to be weary. Life isn't all butterflies and roses. That's not the expression, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not easy. You know, there's, there's trials in our lives. There's, there's, there's hard things. There's confusing things. There's, there's things that surround our lives. We just get busy. There's so much stuff often that it becomes hard to to, to wade through it all, to understand, you know, what, what am I required to do in this, in this situation? How am I supposed to be living 
in the midst of all these things that I have going on, running here and running there and whatever it may be. I'm sure there's, there's different things in each of your life that weigh on you, that, that press on you, that make it hard to think clearly and to understand what it is that, that Christ require, require, excuse me, requires from you in your Christian life, in the day-to-day living. But I want to I wanna bring your attention tonight to a, to a passage of Scripture that lays out a very simple outline for how we need to live. All this stuff gets in and it clouds our thinking and it makes it hard to, to think, what am I supposed to do in this situation, in this situation, and how do I deal with this conflict, and what am I supposed to do about this financial issue that I'm having? But friends, God has boiled it down for us and made it very, very simple how we're supposed to live. Turn with me, if you will, to Micah chapter 6, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. Micah chapter 6, verse 8, and let's read it. Micah 6, 8. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? Submit to you tonight that even in the midst of all the things that are going on in our lives, we must live, we must worship God through our lives in the simplicity that he requires. In the simplicity of these commands is how we have to live our lives. Before I dig into each, each of these three things, doing justice, loving mercy, walking humbly with thy God, I want to point out an interesting term that's in this verse. And it's the word require. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? Usually we think of this as an assignment that's placed on us, or a, a, um, something that's, that's needed of us. Right? If, if I require you to go get me some groceries, that's, that's a, it's, it's a command that I'm placing upon you, in a way. But that's not, that's not the idea of this term here. In, in researching it, the idea of this word require is to seek after, to inquire with care. In, in, a, in, in a figure of speech, it's treading a path to something. If you go somewhere often... You, you, you wear down the ground on, on the way to that, that thing. And that's the idea of this word. These things are what God seeks after in our lives. They're what he carefully desires to see. They're what he looks for in our lives. Because he cares for us. Because he wants us to live fearing him. To live in love of him. So what is the simplicity that God seeks after in our lives? What, is he, what does he carefully look for in the lives of his Christians? And it's these three simple things. He requires us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. A lot of times when we think about the term justice, it's, we, we, we think you know, our minds go immediately to a court of law or, or something to do with the legal system, right? One person against another person, and, you know, whoever was right wins, essentially. That's kind of our idea of justice. But the, the, the basic idea of this word justice is just giving to man what he has a right to claim from you. Giving to man what he has a right to claim from you. Our rights aren't given to us by government. They're not given to us even, even by a constitution. The rights, what we have right to claim from another person and what all other people have a right to claim from us. Those are given to us by God and instilled by God in the nature of of how he made us and how he set up the world. Okay, so that's, that's great. That's all well and good. But what does it actually mean? What does it look like to do justice? What do, what do other men have a right to claim from us? Well, first, all people have a right to claim from you in your living, value as the images of God. Genesis one twenty seven says, So God created man in his own image. Genesis 9.6 backs that up. By man shall his, um, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. 
for God made man in his own image. God takes this value that he places on every single human life very seriously. And that's, that is what we are required to give to other men. Value as the images of God. So what does that look like? Well, Hebrews 2.14 tells us to follow peace with all men. Now, it's easy to say. But when you enter a situation in which someone else is perpetuating conflict, in, in which it feels like they're, they're egging you on, they're, they're doing something that, that, that maybe is violating your rights, and we feel a need all of a sudden to stand up for ourselves, to, to, to fight back, and to keep, to keep what we, we think we owe. But the Bible says, follow peace with all men. Don't enter into, if at all possible, a relationship in which there's conflict. Keep conflict out of your relationships. Pursue, follow after peaceful relationships with men. That's what they have a right to claim from you because they too have value as being made in the images of God. God said, I created this person. Therefore, I thought that they should exist. And who are we to say that someone that God thought should exist doesn't deserve the, the same amount of, of, of grace, the same amount of peace as we ourselves feel that we deserve? So we owe to other men to follow peace, follow peace in our relationships with them. 1 Peter 2.17 says, Honor all men. And the idea there really is value. When you honor, when you honor someone, the president, for example, or, or maybe a king in a different country, you give honor to them because we see the position, and sometimes the person themselves, as having a great amount of value, whether that's the power they hold or, or, or simply the, the, the position that they're in. We see that as, as having a great amount of value. And God says, we're to give that honor, that understanding of value, to every single person around us. That's a, that's a challenge. Because most people don't act like presidents or kings. Good ones, anyway. But we're to, we're, we're to understand that every single person in the eyes of God has an inestimable amount of value. God is the creator of the universe, as the almighty, unchangeable one decided that they have value. And we're to treat others in that way. So we owe to other men to give them value, to, to, to treat them with the value that, that they deserve as being made in the image of God. But also, we owe to other men to share the gospel with them. Romans 1, 14 and 15 says, I am a debtor to the Greeks and to the barbarians, basically to the cultured people and the uncultured people. That was the, the, the idea at that time, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, therefore, because of that, because I am a debtor to them, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are, that are at Rome also. A debtor is one who is bound by a duty. And Paul is saying, I am bound by a duty to communicate the gospel to, in, in this specific instance, the ones that are, that are at Rome. But he says, I am bound by a duty to the Greeks and the barbarians, to the wise, to the unwise. I'm bound by a duty to every single person to share the gospel with them. Because I, having received the grace of God that he offers, not deserving it, what else, what else can I do? If, if, if I didn't deserve something that I received, how can I withhold that from someone else saying, no, this is mine, but you can't have it, when God extends it to everybody? And us, as ones that have received, many of us, I hope all of us, that as having received the grace of God, his wonderful gift of salvation, we are now bound by a duty to extend that grace, to show that grace, to communicate that grace and that wonderful gift to those who have not yet received it. That's a duty that God places on us. So doing justice 
is showing to every single person around you value as the images of God. And it's sharing the gospel with them. But it goes further than that. Number one, God requires us to do justice. Number two, God requires us to love mercy. Mercy is the step beyond justice. Justice is, is the basic requirement of, of morality. Mercy goes a step beyond. So how does that, what does that look like? How do we demonstrate mercy in the way that, in the way that we live our lives? Well, Matthew, Matthew 5, 39 through 44, Jesus is preaching, and he gives a whole series of verses on going above and beyond when someone asks you, asks you to do something, go above and beyond. If they ask you to go a mile, go with them too. If they ask you for your cloak, give them your coat also. And love your enemies. You know, a basic requirement is to love the people around you, right? And, and often, that's not, you know, lo- love the people that you're daily in contact with. And o- often, that's not a, a super hard thing. Now, I come from a family of, of nine siblings eight boys, one girl, I know that just loving the people around you isn't always easy, even if you don't necessarily consider them to be your enemies, which, eh, well, anyway. (laughs) But there are those people sometimes that seem like they're intent on destroying your life, that just every time they get a chance, it seems like they're at your throat, that they, they just have no desire for you to succeed in any way whatsoever. And that step beyond that we're commanded to live in is extending mercy to them, to love them, to sacrifice for them even as as they're acting as an enemy toward you. That's mercy. We're told to be kindly affectionate in Romans 12.10, preferring one another. Now, if I have an apple and an orange... And I prefer, let's say I prefer apples. The team always teases me about this now. Anytime, anytime we have apples and oranges, you know, in our lunches or whatever, they're like, oh, Peter, you want an apple? But if, if, if I prefer apples, then if I have space in my house, you know, for, ju- for just one of them, I'm going to put the apples there, right? If I have a choice between one, one or the other, I'm going to eat the apple. That's what we're supposed to do between ourselves and other people, preferring them. The basic requirement is, is, is to treat all men equally, right? You, you have as much right to, you name it, as I do. But in mercy, in living in mercy, in loving mercy, I go beyond that and I say, no, I will prefer you in this circumstance. If I have time to spend, I'm going to give it to the other person. If I have resources that, that, that can be used, I'm going to use them to set the other person up. That's going beyond the basic requirement. That's, that's, that's showing mercy to them. And God requires us to love living in this way, to love showing that, that extra measure of, of love and of grace and of, of preference to others. We're to do justice. We're to love mercy. And finally, and I would argue most importantly, God requires us to walk humbly with him. He requires us to be in a relationship with him continually. It's not just standing with him, you know, in a specific spot. But it's it's going through life with God. He desires relationship with you. He cares for you. And he requires us to walk with him. But to do so, understanding our position before him. As I mentioned, we don't deserve any of the gifts that we've been given. We, 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 we don't deserve what God has given us in salvation, let alone all the many blessings he's given us, both, both just in, in our lives, houses and families and food and what have you, besides the many blessings of salvation that, that, that he pours into our lives. He talks about that in Ephesians 1 and many other places. The incredible blessings of salvation. We don't deserve any of that. And we rejected God, but he still extended that gift to us. That's our position before him. It's completely him that he's lifted us to this place and none of us. We don't deserve any of it. So we're to walk with him, understanding that position, but accepting the gift that he's given us. 
and entering into wholeheartedly that relationship that he offers us. So friends, I'd encourage you tonight, understand the requirements that God has placed on your life. They may not be easy to live by, but that's why God gives us his grace. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the clarity that you give through it. Pray that you would help us even tonight to, to take each of these, these commandments, each of these requirements to heart and to understand as we live our lives how they apply to our personal lives, how, do they, how they apply to each specific situation, Lord, so that we may live pleasing you and accomplishing what you have for us. Thank you for your grace that enables us to do any of these things, that, that enables us to, to, to even please you, to glorify you, because without it, we are nothing, and we, th- there's no way that we could, we, we could e- ever do anything that's accepted by you. So thank you. Help us to, to, to claim that grace, to ask for that grace, and to live in that grace, in these simple requirements that you've given. And we'll thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I was just giving him some tips on what he said. That's what, no, no, not really. I asked for these, these two families, if you noticed, there are two Gillespie young men and two Holloway uh, brothers who are here as well. At one time, different times, they were both in Grace Baptist Church in Kettering or Dayton, where I was at as pastor. Not when I was there, but the pastor who followed me, Pastor Shaw, they were both there at one time with their families. So uh, they've often sung together as young people. And so I want, I've requested that the four men come and sing for us one more number, and then I will come dismiss us in prayer. Okay, gentlemen, special request. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must fight, keep on the firing line. There are many dangers that we all must face, if we die of fighting it is no disgrace. A coward in the service, he will find no place, so keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, fight. Be, brave. be brave against all evil, never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just Just keep keep on the firing line. God will only use the soldier he can trust. Keep Keep on the firing line. If you wear a crown, then bear the cross you must. Keep Keep on the firing line. Life is but to labor for the master dear. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Rachel will be rewarded for your service here, so keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, fight, be brave, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. When we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the firing line. How we'll praise the Savior for the call we had. Keep on the firing line. When we see the souls that we have helped to win, leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin, with a shout of welcome we will all march in, so keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, fight, be brave, be brave against all evil, never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just, just keep, keep on the firing line. The firing line. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Let's stand and get together. We dismiss in prayer. Stop by their table. Pick up some good music. I greet these young people. We're glad they're here. It was a wonderful blessing. My heart was blessed tonight. I am glad to have groups in. I don't have to apologize for their music.
and we didn't have to apologize tonight. It was a great blessing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll keep us on the firing line. Lord, we ask for your help and your guidance in our lives. We pray that we will listen with our hearts to the music we've heard tonight, to the message we've heard tonight. You do require certain things of us, but we are so thankful that you were there with us. You never leave us. We're not alone. We heard about all that tonight. We thank you for the sweet young gals who are here and sang for us, how beautifully they sang, these young men, all that they did for us. We praise them, praise this time tonight to hear about you through this music, through the spoken word. Would you bless them in their travels? Help us to be kind to them in a love offering that we can place in the, in the offering plates in the back there, give on tithely, be able to uh, drop by the church office that we can send to their expenses for this summer. Make them a blessing wherever they go, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Good night.